Hey, scrapbook friends, it's Nicole from Nicole's Scrapbooks, and I'm here with this month's installment of The Savvy Scrapbookers. This is a collaboration I do with my two good friends, Donna Guest and Debbie Martin, where we take one Creative Memories paper pack, and in this case, this month, we took one sticker pack, and then we divide that up, and each of us creates a double page layout so that when you're done, if you choose to follow along, recreate my layout, recreate Donna's layout, recreate Debbie's layout. You'll only need one paper pack and one sticker pack. We won't use any, have any duplicates. We'll use up most of the papers, probably not most of the stickers because there's so many stickers, but you won't have a lot of waste and you won't have to buy two packs in order to recreate these. So today I'm actually in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, Debbie and I are both going to get here today and then Donna's coming in a couple of days. And we're super excited to be on a Creative Memories trip together that we've all earned and want to thank all of you who have been such great supporters of my Creative Memories business, whether it's by, you know, shopping with me or shopping with one of my team members or becoming one of my team members. And of course, all the rest of you who just allow me to do what I love, even just through this YouTube channel. It's so satisfying. Never would have thought that I could, you know, make money scrapbooking. It's, it's, a, it's a dream life. Living the dream. So... Today we're going to be using the Birds and Blossoms paper pack and we're also going to be using of course our 12 inch straight trimmer but I wanted to use the wavy edge trimmer for this one. Um, so if you have this trimmer yours may be blue with yellow um, or maybe blue with the light blue. If you have the old yellow blades and you need new blades the blue color um, fit the old dark blue trimmer with with the that used to have the yellow blades. But we're gonna be using the 12 inch decorative trimmer. If you don't have this, but you have the old um, custom cutting system, you can probably use that. I don't have mine anymore, so I don't know, but hopefully you'll be able to make it work. I really do like this decorative trimmer. I don't love the blades. I'm so spoiled by the 12 inch trimmer, but I love the look that it gives. And I think you will agree. And I'm gonna show you a couple different um, options with this layout and hopefully you'll, um, be able to figure out which one you like better. All right, so let's get started. So the papers that I chose when we met virtually to divide up the contents of this kit were the two um, light blue with birdhouses with the yellow plaid on the back. And I'll be honest with you, I thought I was gonna use the yellow plaid. I love this yellow kind of, it's not really plaid, it's more like a gingham. Um, I love the yellow plaid and I wanted to use the flowers, but then I also got the stripe and I love the stripe but you notice it doesn't have any yellow or orange in it. And then I have this with the yellow and orange flowers. Now it's got some blue flowers in it and I felt like I needed to bring out the blue. So if you don't wanna use all your paper or you like this yellow gingham you wanna use or something else, you could do this on like a, a baby blue background paper if you like, but we're gonna use this blue um, paper with, with the little birds and birdhouse drawings because I think it's very cute. But you can set that aside for right now because we don't need it yet. We'll do the easy cut first, which is going to be our stripe. And I'm just gonna cut it into two four and a half by 12 inch pieces. Hi there, future Nicole here. Um, I forgot to mention this as I was doing the cutting, but when you're cutting this four and a half inch strip, you wanna make sure that you cut against the direction of the lines. Otherwise, when you go to line it up, they may not line up and I always think that like vertical lines this way look much nicer than horizontal lines, especially when they're hard to match. All right, back to the layout. All right, so four and a half, um, two four and a half inch pieces, that makes nine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this remaining piece, which is three inches wide, and we're gonna turn it and we're gonna cut it into four three by three squares. And these are going to be little mini photo mats for the bottom of our layout. Okay, here is a cutting guide for paper number one, which for me was the stripe. So you want to cut perpendicular to the stripe for these first 4.5 inch strips. And then the, it doesn't matter with this, you're going to have to turn it and cut them at uh, the other direction and you're going to use the back. So this is paper number one. So then we're going to set that aside and then we're going to get on to what's going to be a little bit more tricky which is the decorative trimmer cutting part of this layout. The 12 inch decorative trimmer has two tracks 
the more swoopy one is called the wave and the less swoopy one is called the swell. We are going to use the wave side. And sometimes uh, you'll see people where they um, center it with this one. You don't need to center it. And in fact, I think we'll, you will like it better if you bump it down here towards the bottom. And so what I want to do is cut six, well, I think actually I only need five. I need five quarter inch strips. So I'm going to cut the first, actually, you're not really supposed to take this off, but I'm going to take it off so that you can see what I'm doing right here. Um, oh, I have this. Um, I'm, here's the wave, the groove where the blade goes in. And then you can see there are these little um, grid marks on there. And we're going to be measuring with this grid mark that is one grid mark up. It's a quarter of an inch. So it's on the, um, when I go to measure, it's like this mark right here. I don't know how to describe it except to tell you that it's going to be one grid mark up from where the groove is. So hopefully that means, you know, that is something you can understand. So I have seen where someone took some paint and um, like rubbed it in here, acrylic paint and colored in their lines. I may do that because I tell you what, it's a little bit tricky to see this. But okay, so I'm making sure here's the here's the line. I don't want to zoom in too too close because then it makes it harder to see later. But let's see. We'll zoom in for a second. All right. So there's the the groove where we want to cut, and I'm going to line my paper up with that little grid line right there. And you don't have to be super exact. Actually, I want to get this guy out of the way. All right. And now I'm going to just come on down. Because I, I'm bracing my paper against this end, I'm going to cut towards me. All right, so this piece i will just set aside. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the top of the, um, the piece I just cut and put it on that same quarter inch line. And that's going to give me a quarter inch thick um, little wavy stripe. Okay, so there's my little wavy stripe. We're actually gonna be using the green side of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this four more times. Um, I, I think we really maybe only need four, but um, it's good to have a, an extra just in case we're gonna need to piece something because this is not precision, um, you know, matching. I don't, I don't know what the secret is to do any precision matching. Okay three, four, and five. And I will tell you, using this old trimmer again makes me just appreciate my 12 inch trimmer so much more because you do kind of get this jagged edge from this, this trimmer. And maybe if I would have cut it the other direction, it wouldn't have done it, but I just, I, I, a straight a straight blade just can't compete with a rotary blade. A rotary blade is just so much nicer. Okay, now we're gonna take this paper that we've cut the five quarter inch strips off of, and we're going to cut it in half with the, um, the little wave at the bottom. So we need to find the six inch line right here. So I'm measuring at six inches. And then we've got our two pieces together. And this is the tricky part because we want I want you to bookend these. We call it bookending. Now, they're not going to line up this way. That doesn't matter. I want you to bookend them so you've got one edge that's, you know, I mean, the two, the two straight edges will be the same because that's what we want to do. And then I want you to take this and do the exact same thing we did. Put it on that line stacked up. So you're cutting through two layers of this. Make sure that it's straight. And mine's actually not a little, is a little not exactly six inches, but um, make sure that the line right here is straight. Both of these are braced against this bottom edge. It's always harder when you stack. All right, and then we're gonna swoop with the, with the wavy blade again. 
Oh, look, I messed up right there. All right, so mine wiggled a little bit, so these aren't gonna be exact, but you know what? It's not gonna matter, nobody's gonna care. Here's the cutting guide for paper number two. This is probably the harder one, but if you pay attention and, and just think about what you're doing, it won't be that hard. So you wanna cut first five half inch strips using the wavy trimmer. They don't have to be exact, just do your best to keep them the same size. Um, and I really liked to butt them up against the edge. So cut five of those wavy strips, then you turn this 90 degrees, set the wavy strips aside, cut in half at six inches, and then you book fold those two pieces and cut off one of the long edges. And save these pieces because you're gonna use them. All right, so this is paper number two. So then we're done with our wavy cutter. So let's go ahead and do our assembly now. I think this is gonna be the easiest way to do it. So this is where you could decide if you wanted to do it a little bit differently than I did it. Uh, if you don't like this little birdhouse-y side. One of the things I love about this double-sided paper is having the opportunity to kind of mix things up. So this is the way that I designed this layout. All right, because we bookended this, this is gonna, you know, we know this is gonna be in the right direction. We're gonna put the little stripes here and then these two little pieces at the bottom. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's gonna be kind of the base layout, the way my sample showed it. But let's go ahead and flip it over. So we got a couple different options if you'd rather, if you don't like those orange flowers, I know some people don't like orange. Um, you're gonna get a little bit of orange flower in there. You could do it like this. You could flip this over. That's a little bit much with the leaves, but maybe if you're taking pictures of your yard or something, you could do it like that. Okay, you could have it on here. You could also do it on the yellow side, which is the side I originally thought I was gonna start doing this on. All right, so you could have it like this on the yellow. You could have it like this on the yellow. I actually kind of like it still on the yellow with the stripe, all right? But let's go ahead and do it the way that I had my sample just to be to make it easier. And we're gonna start by putting our uh, four and a half inch stripe papers. So with these, you want your um, the bottom of the stripe paper to be about an inch from the bottom. So you wanna leave about a one inch gap. And of course, if you have um, a grid or the 13 by 13 cutting mat or something that you can measure with, even just a ruler, it doesn't have to be exactly an inch, but you want to make sure that you're going to leave enough space for the little swell piece that we cut. And this way, by lining it up here and here, I know that my this my little lines are straight. And then once I have the first one down, I don't really like to need to measure. I'm just going to butt it up against the other piece. And for me, I like to make sure that I, my stripes are going in the same direction. I could do it this way, so they're kind of being mirrored but I prefer the look of having them be, you know, uniform and, and marching the same way across the page, not, um, not alternating with each other. So just line those up. Okay, so then we've got our um, little four and a half inch strips, and then we can put the floral pieces, and it's easy to tell which way these need to go, of course, because you want this little scalloped edge to go off around the side. So then you can just butt it up against this piece you've already put down because you know it is straight, then you know this piece will be also on straight. If yours is maybe not quite, quite straight, try to make this piece straight because we're going to cover this section up with a sticker. So if there is a gap, it's, you know, have it be right here. But hopefully it's straight because we, you know, we paid attention when we were cutting, right? Like we always do. We never cut crooked, never. Okay. So now we're gonna take these two pieces. So we have three little wavy pieces. This is the piece, let's see. This is the first piece we cut off and it's the full 12 inches and it's square on both ends. 
Then we have the other two pieces that we cut off that were kind of bookended and they're square on one end, but the other end is a little bit swoopy. And so those are the ones we want the square side to go toward the middle with the little swoopy end on the end because we're gonna, um, it kind of makes it like a little bracket. We're gonna kind of use it as a, to look as if we're continuing this same, it's actually a little bit longer than that piece, but it's gonna look a little as if we are doing the same. Actually, maybe it isn't a little bit. Um, I don't know. This is the piece we cut off, right, when we stacked them. Now, this one is not gonna have a sticker, so try to make that one straight. And you could also do this one, like I say, with the green, if, if this is too much flowers for you. I played with it both ways. I couldn't decide what I liked better. Um, but I do like the flowers. And then with the stickers that I picked, um, I think that the flowers are going to go. So we put our little... strips down here at the bottom. And now we're going to do the little decorative part where I took those strips that we cut and I flipped them over and we just kind of aligned them. And I chose to go off the edge. Originally I thought I was going to cut them right here and kind of make that point, which you could still do. And maybe, maybe I'll try one of them cut and one of them not cut, but we're just going to position these. The trick is it's, they're not going to exactly fit just because of you know, the way the wavy trimmer works, the way that we are humans. Um, so you're going to want to use probably some repositionable adhesive. And if you have, you know, like this silicone mat, um, or even, even you can use like a piece of wax paper, a piece of scrap cardboard, any of those things are going to work fine to, um, just to protect your work surface. You would not believe how many times after I've hosted a crop, it is a ton of work to scrub off even the repositionable adhesive. People use the repositionable just on the table and they don't realize that like it sticks. It sticks to what you stick it onto. So I've now just done two and that was maybe, I should have played with it first, but um, you wanna match this wave. So like this doesn't match. You see that that's upside down. I wanna do it this way. No, let's see, that way because I want it to be able to go off the edge. Oh, look, this is the one that matches perfectly, actually. So it lines up here, and I'm just gonna go off the edge, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it to make it about, about a quarter inch distance, just to leave that gap. And then I'm gonna take my other piece, and this, let's see, this one's a little trickier because of the way we cut it. So I'm just gonna layer it over Again, making sure that you're lining up the curves and then we'll just trim that. Okay, so I'm actually gonna cut this a little long and then tuck it under. I feel like that is easier than trying to make it match exactly. Although, like I said, we're gonna cover that up. And then I'm gonna turn over from the back and actually I put a little bit of adhesive right there where it's on the edge and trim this piece off. So I guess four pieces would have been okay if we need if we need to do any patching, but um, I like to have a backup piece just in case. So let's see. So this is the one where I just, I left the edges off the edge and I think it looks cute, but I think I'm going to go ahead and trim this one just to see. This is gonna be a slightly different than the previous one. Give you a couple of options. It's a little tricky to try and get it exactly. All right, so there's our little finished edge. Right here, I think I need a little more adhesive. I kind of like that with that finished edge. I don't know, which one do you guys like better? All right, so that's side one. And now we'll do the same thing on side two, but it might not work out quite as well with the aligning the um, cutter because we, um, you know, this is the reverse side. And actually, this one looks like the most raggedy. I probably need a new blade. That one's the worst. 
probably need a new blade for my trimmer. So I don't want that. But see, it doesn't, like, I can't line it up and have it match exactly. Only the, oops, only the one side lined up exactly because this is the opposite side. So what we're going to do is we're going to patch it. So I think I'll even just take this little piece that I had from the first um, side. You know, even that doesn't fit. All right, we're gonna do it differently. We're just gonna patch. I'm not exactly sure where it's gonna line up, but I'm just gonna make it fit with the curves even though that means it's not gonna be long enough, okay? So it's not long enough and I've gone off the edge and this is where having that fifth piece is gonna come in handy because now I can take this extra piece and just try to patch it in. And I'm overlapping quite a bit. Let's see, I want this to go down so this part's maybe a little fiddly all right and then just kind of see like where where there's an unobtrusive place to hide your seam i think it i think it's pretty well hidden just because of this pattern and i'll trim this off on the edge even though i'm going to trim this the same way. I don't think that's going to fit. Oh, look, that would fit right there. If I don't, since I'm not going off the edge, but this is one is, that's the one that's all kind of ratty. So I'm going to use this one. And then again, I'm just going to eyeball this. I was thinking about this um, layout after I came up with my sample and thinking about how I love the decorative trimmer, but I hate the blade for it so much. It reminds me of the bad old days when that was the blade we used in our straight trimmer. So I'm thinking, how can we get Creative Memories to give us a better, um, a better blade? And I'm I'm wondering if there's a way to do a rotary trimmer. So my my brain is on overdrive trying to figure out a way to solve the problem of this um, this little blade not being nearly as good as the straight trimmer. All right, so that's all gonna be extra, but better to have too much than not enough. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I'm gonna make sure that I got them stuck down right where they overlap so that then I can just come in here. I'm just kind of lining up my scissor with the other piece. And matching that up. Mm. Okay. So there we go. So I will let you guys decide what you like, whether you like the trimmed corner or you like the off the edge corner. All right. So now we're going to do, um, we're gonna put some stickers, just the sticker border on, and then we're gonna cut our mats. So of course, if you don't want to, um, you know, you don't wanna use the stickers, you don't have to. Um, I wonder if we could have cut another little squiggly line of how that would have looked right here. Yeah, no, that doesn't really work. It's too, it's a little too skinny. But we do have the stickers, so hopefully you still have these stickers. You could also just cut a strip of um, like complimentary cardstock. And what I'm doing is I'm making the leaves point to the outside. Okay, so this side, I'm starting at the middle, lining it up, and just going right to the edge. And then the other side, I'll go the opposite direction. I just felt like that was more visually pleasing to me than having them all try to go in the same direction. I love to kind of, I feel like it opens it up, you know, to have your stuff go off the edge. Okay, so now we're gonna do some photo mats. And for this one, I used beige because the I felt like that was very neutral. It kind of went in with this brown. But as I've looked at this later, I'm not sure how I feel about the beige. So I cut some that were green this is Kelly Green. This is one of the suggested cardstock colors to go along with this. And I feel like it completely changes the look of this layout to use the Kelly Green. What do you think? 
But then I thought, you know, I also really kind of want to bring out the yellow. I don't want to do the orange, but I love yellow. So I thought maybe about doing canary, which would kind of be in between the super bright Kelly green and the super muted beige. So I'm going to do for this one, the canary, but know that you can choose whichever color you want. If you wanted to do like the sky blue, that would work too. If you wanted to do the orange, I think the pump CM's pumpkin orange, that would work great. Um, but what we need here first are the, the photo mats for here. And these are going to be three and a half inch squares. So we'll cut a three and a half, three and a half, and then turn and cut again at three and a half. All right, I'm thinking maybe I need to find a way to do some kind of a little cutting guide for you guys. Maybe I will see if I can do a cutting guide. And I'll use video editing magic to, to stick that in after, after the way these pieces are cut. So you should have six three and a half inch squares. And then this last piece is going to be about five inches. Now, I know that most photos these days are 4x6 or 4x5.3, uh, but to get the max use of our paper, we're going to cut these into three 4x5-inch mats. If you really wanted to have a, a bigger mat, like 45 by 6 and a half or something for your 4x6 four, for four photo, you could absolutely do that. You just need a second piece of paper. And you probably don't need this cutting guide, but since I did it for the other papers, I'll do it for this one. You're going to need six three by five inch squares. And I would cut those first, cut it three by five, and then cut the squares, cut it three by five, cut the squares. And then from the remaining piece, you turn this and cut each at four inches twice. So you get three five by four inch pieces. So I've never tried this with a cutting guide before. Um, I'd love some feedback on how you feel about having those cutting guides. All right, let me get this sample out of the way. I'll bring it back so we can compare it to uh, the different with the yellow. Okay, now we're going to take our mats and we're going to put one of these four by fives horizontally right here, one vertically, and the other horizontally. And of course, you could change it up based on your photos. If you wanted to do them all vertically, you could. If you wanted to actually tuck these down a little farther so you see more of that swoop, you could. Maybe I'll do that actually. Well, I kind of like it to be have that little gap. But I'm going to do horizontal, vertical, horizontal. I thought that I was going to use this uh, for my Easter pictures. You know, my family is not together this year for Easter. And I have a picture. I have a picture of, you know, my husband and my boys. And then I have my, each of my daughters sent me a picture. But um, that's all I have. I have nothing for this bottom. And I thought, oh, I'll just take some pictures of the spring flowers in my yard. But turns out we had a big rainstorm the other night. And there are no spring flowers in my yard. So then we're gonna put our little three inch squares down here. I really am liking the yellow. I um, I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it, but I'm liking, I like the, the blue and yellow, you know, goes nicely together and it just ties the whole thing together. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick all these down and I won't make you watch that. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got all my mats down. I think I will show you again what it would look like if you had chosen Kelly Green, just so you can see that one more time. And I'll show you the beige so you can decide. I kind of do like the Kelly Green. It's very, very vibrant. Um, but I had a hard time deciding. But I love these colors. I love this paper. And I'm not much, much of a flowery person, but for whatever reason, I, I do love yellow and I love yellow flowers. But that's real pretty with the green. And of course, once you get your pictures on, it won't, you know, be so green. But we're going to, we're doing the yellow. I'll save these for another project. And what I'm going to do is take the last, these last little four mats and put them as little secondary photo mats. Now you only have four of them. So you can decide if you wanted to, um, like, leave the blank space to the outside. 
If you want to use these in, in lieu of photos or you want to cut your photos, these are three inch. So if you were to cut your photo like two and a half inch, which I thought, like I said, I was going to do Easter pictures and then like pictures of my yard and just print them small. And then, you know, I have one little sad azalea bush blooming and nothing else. So, um, or you could, you know, stagger them so that the space is in the middle because we're going to put some flower stickers. And on my previous layout, I put this wreath up here in the corner and I think it got lost. So I think this time I'm going to put the flower wreath down there and change it up a little bit. So I'm going to put my two um, I think I'll do th yeah, I think I'll do three like this and stick these down. Actually, let me let's play with the sticker arrangement and see. One of the things I've learned from Debbie um, as we've done this together, when we're divvying up the stickers on um, on Zoom with each other, we each just take our sticker sheet and hack it up. And it's actually been kind of fun. So you'll probably see, I don't know, I mean, we all we use, I'll make a sample and then we do another one. So you maybe don't see that part, but I got the little wreath, the orange flower and the yellow flower. All right, so, and then I have the words, um, spring has sprung, because I really thought that went well with these flowers and the things I take pictures of, you know? So, so what I did on my original is I had this kind of up here with spring has sprung on there, and then I had a flower and a flower, thinking I would use these for journal boxes. Okay, so that's this one. But I think you'll agree with me that that is completely lost up there, don't you think? So maybe I should put that in here and then just put a photo there. But I was kind of thinking maybe I'd do it down here. Then we don't get our we don't get our vis visual triangle. I've already stuck my pictures down. That's kind of a triangle. So the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could rotate this and do it the other direction. And in that case, it would be easier because you could do, I could do my spring of spring up here and I could do my little flowers like that. So I kind of like it upside down too. So many choices, y'all. Um, as long as, well, I guess my birdhouses are now upside down if I had done, done it that way. But we'll go back to the original way. I just, I just don't, I had done all my sample before I stuck this down and I thought because it has a white border that it would stand out enough. And I just don't think it does, which is kind of nice if you don't want a very noticeable um, title, I guess. But it's kind of a shame not to be able to see that. So let's do, let's see, I think I'm going to do my spring is sprung title here. And the yellow flower right here and then the orange flower right there. So I hope it's okay that my second layout is a little bit different than the first layout. Um, not sure how, how much you guys were counting on the first layout looking exactly the same. But I'm thinking that this would work really well with any number of papers. And actually, maybe I'll take a minute and put one together using something else so that you can see it. I know that in the past, um, we've done that. We've taken our, um, taken our layouts and, and done them with other um, papers. So this one, the inside of the wreath is not cut out. So you could use this for journaling. I don't know how it, maybe I want it up here. I don't know. That's, oh, this is when I wish we did these live. Oh, well, I think I will put it right here. And then with this one, I want to put this on some foam squares. Just to pop it up a little bit 
to move it away from that because it also has the white background and it just kind of will get lost otherwise. And I like to be real generous with my foam squares so that when these get uh, into my album and the uh, album is closed, even if it gets, even if it gets squished, then it's not going to squish them down too much. So we'll do spring has sprung. And then I'll put this one right here. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll take this sticker release paper underneath and leave a, you know, like a little space so that if you want to tuck your photo behind it, you don't have to peel the sticker up. I don't know if you ever do this, but you want to put your photo here. Then you can just tuck your photo behind this when you're ready to, you know, stick your picture down and then pull that little piece out. So we'll put that right there and then we'll put this one down here. And I think this would be a good little journal box. All right, so we're done. This is a not, not a hard um, layout. It's pretty quick. Um, I mean, it's a little, you know, a little fiddly with, with those, those pieces with the blade, but you have a lot of options. So I'd love to know um, if you're going to thinking of creating this layout, do you prefer the trimmed corners or do you prefer the off the edge corners? I can't decide which I like better. And do you like the beige? Do you like the yellow? Do you, would you like the canary? Um, and also about this thing with the wreath. I'd love to know your opinion. Which which of the layouts do you like better? The original or the one that I showed you, the the, the finished, the final? I don't know, the, the sample or the final? So um, I think I am going to, you know, stop the video and, and quick redo this whole layout using a different paper pack just to see how it goes. Um, and I'll put, put that in after before I actually finish out the layout. All right, so here is the exact same layout in a very, very different style. And this is using Joy to the World. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that last summer I did a whole Christmas in July series uh, using Joy to the World. So I have quite a bit of it left over. And I thought that would be a good way to kind of swap it out. I actually really love it with Joy to the World. I like it where I put the stripe in this background. Um, make sure that if you, you want to use a stripe up here, that when you make your initial cuts, you cut in the same direction as the stripe because this is the piece you're cutting first because then you turn it and cut it. Um, but I think it turned out great. So I encourage you, if you don't have Bees and Blossoms or you ha are working on something else, I would love to see what you do if you try this with, um, with a different paper pack, a different style, a different theme. And of course, if you have photos for it, I'm so sorry that I don't have photos for my finished layout here. Um, with um, bees and blossoms, but hopefully that will just remind me that I need to get out this spring and take some flowers quick after they bloom before the next storm blows through. So thanks so much for watching. Now, if you'd like to, you can hop over to Debbie Martin, uh, Debbie's CM Scrapbooking Buddies, and then Donna Guest, uh, the Lazy Scrapbooker. I will put their links in the comments. And we'll be watching your comments as we're together in Puerto Vallarta. We sure appreciate the kind things you have to say about, uh, about our videos. Love, love the feedback, the comments. Love to know which you prefer, the yellow or the beige, the off the edge or um, the trimmed. I think I like it off the edge because you can see when I did this one, I, I let it go off the edge. So thanks so much for watching. We'll be back. Uh, the Savvy Scrapbookers will be back the second Tuesday of every month. So we'll see you again in May. And then I'll be back tomorrow with a pre-recorded um, theme park Thursday. And that's probably all you're going to get from me till I get home from Mexico next week. So thank you so much. Happy spring and happy scrapbooking.